So hi everyone. Sorry for the for the mix up. I'm Jan Koch. I'll be talking about the direct democracy in the student union. So not so much in the university because that's I don't really know anything about that. Uh, about my background, I've been in the student union council for I think three years now, and right now for this year I've been in the student union board, the sort of the executive part. So in representative pyramid of the student union, I'm kind of in the top or very close to the top. <laughs> so this will also be kind of a, like a bureaucratic view of the, of the student union. So if, if my English is weird or if I'm speaking some sort of jargon, then just stop me. And I'll try to get through all the points in English also, so you don't have to understand. So first I'll have a few comments on, the, on my view of the current situation in the student union and about its democratic sort of uh, state. I would say that there is a sort of crisis of representation in the, in the student union. Some people don't think there is, but uh, I sincerely think there is. The, the voting percent of in the, in the student union council elections has been 30%. For the last, I think, 20 or 30 years, in the it, it dropped from about 60 or 70 in the in the 60s or 70s at its at its peak. After that, it, it's been teetering on barely on 30 percent. And the national average, that is uh, the the voting percent in other student unions around Finland, is about 25 percent. So it's even worse over there. And uh, the 30% is also often in the sort of like who elite uh, discourse. It's being uh, explained away that oh, it's uh, that's about about only the 60% of the people of the members of the student union are active students. That there's something like uh, 15,000 people who go to Unicafe every day, and they're active students, and most of them vote. So there's really no problem. The real vote, voting percentage is in 50 or 60. But I think it's that's not a credible explanation, and certainly it's not. It doesn't defend the the very low voting count. Then uh, the student union is not really talked about anywhere. There's there's uh, very little that a member of the student union can do to find out what his or her represented uh, rep represented representatives do when they're in the student union council or on the board. Really, uh, last last year. So, student union uh, newspaper used to make do some sort of journalism, some sort of critical journalism on the student union politics. But nowadays, it's just it's mostly a, a lifestyle magazine for the petty bourgeois, which has, <laughs> which has really no connection to the to the student union itself. So, as a result, no one really knows what happens in the student union, and no one cares. And if you look at the, the breakdown of the student union council, the majority of the seats are on groups that are focused on uh, on advocacy for certain kinds of student organizations, for example, for student nations, Osakuna, or, or for different sort of sub subject groups. And their, their main goal is to maximize funds and, and space for these groups, not, not necessarily use the student union for some sort of larger societal sort of uh, context or, or for some sort of use the student union as a part of some kind of struggle. So that makes uh, sort of political action through the student union quite, quite hard. And uh, the direct uh, channels for direct democracy or, or channels for for single, uh, for direct uh, contact with the student union are are quite outdated and they're very rarely used. I'll have I'll talk more about the the individual methods later. But on the other hand, uh, last year there was a um, discussion when planning the the activities for this year, there was a pretty long discussion in the Student Union Council about direct democracy and there was a sort of, uh, there was a motion to, to hold uh, a general assembly 
and to uh, develop sort of electrical or, or like internet-based uh, sort of like uh, kanavat or, or like channels for for members to to uh, affect the, uh, the the actions of the student union. But I think the past was the motion was it didn't pass. It, it, it was uh, like ten votes from sixty votes that it fell short. So, and it hasn't really been talked about since then. Then uh, last week, actually, there was a general assembly in the University of Tampere, which I, I gathered was quite uh, effective. There was some like 300 or 400 students participating, and they, they made a statement about uh, well, they're they're trying to merge all the the universities and uh, universities of applied sciences in Tampere area. So. The board of the board of the student union of Tampere announced this, and I think two weeks later the, the meeting was held. I don't know if it was like binding in the in in the sort of sense that it went by all the union rules, but it, it, it succeeded in putting out a, a sort of a manifesto, and and also it uh, it binded the 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 board of, of the student union to develop new kinds of uh, horizontal uh, organized, or horizontal sort of structures for the student union. So it's quite interesting to see what happens there. Uh, then there's there's been through the whole history of the Finnish student movement, there's been this ethos of, of uh, students as pioneers. So there's also been talk of uh, in this in this particular area of direct democracy, the student unions are actually quite reactionary compared to well the Finnish state, for example, or compared to the city of Helsinki. So there is some support to be found for direct democracy in this sort of we we as students have to be the first to do everything. So we should be in front of the, of the van on the vanguard of of direct democracy, not as these reactionaries as we are right now. Uh, then about the Tampere situation, it's it's quite clear that these sort of uh, general assemblies are easier to uh, to organize when there is some sort of larger crisis happening in the in the student union. For example, uh, I would imagine that uh, student this sort of uh, tuition fees or or a threat to the automatic uh, uh, that's difficult to translate for the for the automatic membership of of the student unions would be the sort of crisis that could trigger a sort of uh, could trigger enough pressure for a general assembly, for example. And of course, this event is brings optimism that someone cares about this kind of stuff. Uh, then about the methods themselves, here's some riot porn. Uh, so there's a this sort of general election or or a sort of member election. In the current uh, rules of the student union, uh, there will be an election if three fourths of the student union council, representative council demand it. I don't think, know if there's ever been one because well, the criteria is so high, and it's difficult to imagine a situation where three fourths of the representative council would be like, "Okay, we don't want to decide this. We want to give this power away." To the members themselves, it's very difficult to imagine this sort of this sort of situation happening. It's also uh, in 2013 when the when the, the the union rules were being renewed. There was a there was a, a motion to to open up the this sort of election to that if you, if you could collect like five percent of of the student union members to request an election that it it would happen, but it didn't pass because they were considered to be too expensive, and it is expensive to have a have a sort of old school uh, sort of write your number on the ballot kind of election. Of course, you could have these kind of elections at the same time as the student union representative elections, and, and they wouldn't cost any extra. Or you could have them uh, on the web, which is well, there's been talk that. There would be some sort of uh, like security, cyber security risks. I don't know anything about cyber security. I don't know if these sorts of arguments are credible. 
but it is it is a sort of point that the uh, the student union operates about well depending on how you how you count it from three million to about sixty million euros worth of property. And if someone would like to sabotage this by rigging some sort of election, then I guess it could be purely impossible. But yeah, if, if there was something that could be changed and should be changed is that these sort of elections would be uh, the, the members of the student union could request these kind of elections. Then there's the General Assembly. There is, uh, by the rules, if 120 of the members of the student union request the General Assembly, then it would be organized. Or if the chairperson of the student union requests it. The chairperson of the student union is chosen every year by the majority of the, of the student union council. So it's a sort of new, it's, he's, he or she is the highest on paper, the highest official. She's sort of the president of the student union. So if there's about 1,400 signatures by student union members, then there's a general assembly. Or if the, uh, the president requests it, and when there is a general assembly, it's <laughs> the, the general assembly is uh, uh, on the, the the agenda of the general assembly is dictated by by what is the request on the on the thing that you sign. In other words, you have to you can't really stretch the agenda from from the original uh, cause of the general assembly. Sometimes there are, there have been when there have been general assemblies. Uh, people have tried to bring other things to the agenda outside the sort of original intention. At this point, the president has a lot of power in deciding can they bring something new to the agenda or not. And there is really no, no sort of uh, detour from this. The president gets to decide him or herself. Uh, then, oftentimes when, when one talks about general assemblies, it's said that they're very expensive. It's true. It's, it depends also on uh, the space that you want to hold it in. There's been, if you want to reserve a space for every that would fit every member of the student union, that's about twenty-seven thousand. You need to reserve like the Harpa Arena or or some or some uh, exhibition space. But if you want to, I think the last. Uh, the last General Assembly in 99 was held in the big, uh, the, the, the biggest room in the university, the old Juhlasali, which didn't really cost much. Of course, there is, uh, <clears throat> there is how, to, how to get the word across to the members. It's, it's possible to send a piece of mail to every, like paper mail to every member of the student union, but it costs a lot of money, but it's possible. Then uh, one thing that I would, I think that would be uh, a step forward on the General Assembly uh, front would be if you could collect the signatures electronically because it's it's quite hard to get uh, 1,400 signatures on the street level or it takes a lot of uh, commitment and, and a lot of commitment committed people. So here's a. A sort of case study of, of the last General Assembly, which I dubbed Kosovo 99, because it sounds kind of cool. Uh, <laughs> this is often used as a sort of uh, as a sort of like uh, warning. War example? Yeah, yeah, exactly. When 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 the new student union council gets trained, and it's mentioned that well, there's, then there's the student assembly, the general assembly, but. In 99, it was horrible and it sucked and it was expensive and it was just a waste of time. So it's 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 quite important to look what what happened, what was like positive or what was negative about this. I, I wasn't there, so I have this is like a, this is a reconstruction and thus I don't really know. I don't have a definite answer if it was a waste of time or <laughs> not. But it's uh, it was called uh, it was sort of a petition. For the student union to do something about that, about the Balkan War, or the the, the, the war of the former Yugoslavian republics, uh, there were actively two people who were organizing it. Who were members of this sort of uh, political group in the student council. I think it was the critical, the critical group, 
it's called. And these two people were, uh, they had a lawsuit, they had an ongoing lawsuit against the student union, and, and they were actually in the, in the hobby oikeus, the, the Supreme Court of Finland. Okay, Court of Appeals. Yes. Oh, the Court of Appeals, yeah. 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 They, were, they were currently having a sort of legal dispute with the student union. Uh, there were 250 people who participated. There was a bit more, I think, in the beginning, and well, as it lasted eight hours, fewer and fewer people stayed there. Uh, and there were some like concrete uh, resolutions. There was a there was a resolution to, the, or there was this sort of uh, there was this sort of manifesto to uh, sort of condemn all war activities on the Balkan. Then there was a condemnation of uh, the civil rights situation in Turkey. Then there was a sort of statement to support the Jubilee. It was, it was this sort of alter globalization uh, sort of debt, the third world debt uh, sort of, well, yeah, that sort of thing. And, and then there was a statement to support same-sex uh, marriages and same-sex adoption. And, well, in the aftermath, there was a lot of writing on the Yliopilaslehti about this. It was called uh, an election stunt, because one of the organizers was up for election about a few months later. Uh, it was called a farce because it lasted for eight hours and, and it was considered that the, uh, the results were quite quite slight. There, there was, a, I think, a flea market and a, and a cloth collection campaign that was organized afterwards for the Balkan uh, refugees, which I guess is something. And then there was, the organizers defended it as a as a way to sort of fix the, uh, the huge democracy deficit in, in the student union. And there's also this third thing, the uh, member initiative, which is, uh, is not really direct democracy in the, in the tightest sense. Uh, it's, uh, if, if an organization of an organization or 30 members of the student union Ask something to be put on the agenda of the uh, the student union council, then it's put there. And when I've been in the in the council, there have been two two initiatives uh, which were both concerning organizations in different uh, student union owned spaces, and they were both voted down. I think I think there's first a vote that uh, about will will the student union Will the, will the council even process this? And then it, they usually get voted down at that point. And we will not even process this. We, 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 it's, it's, I think it's comparable to the, to the new uh, citizen initiatives in the Finnish state that they, they get stuck in some sort of bureaucratic limbo and then they're forgotten about. And yes, finally, I found this great picture when you put Google with student uh, student politics, it shows this weird picture with Nicola Machiavelli in the middle and then these sort of Disney characters with different stuff. I think it's quite it's quite accurate. <laughs> so about the economy, because that's all. When you talk about direct democracy with some student union active. He, the, the question of economy always comes because it's so expensive to hold these sort of direct democratic things. So uh, here's a rundown on the on the current budget. Uh, the council gets about twenty thousand dollars, twenty thousand euros a year. Those are mostly for for space rental and stuff like that. And every second year during the uh, during the student union council elections, there's about 70,000 euros used for that. It's mostly for uh, well, for the people you need to hire to organize these kinds of elections. Then for a general assembly in the 90s, it costs about 30,000. But I think if you really like to hold uh, a proper general assembly, which would fit, need to you need to get at least half of people theoretically to, or you should prepare 
for a much larger assembly, it would cost a bit more. Plus, this is this was in the I I uh, changed it up from the Finnish marks, so I don't know if the if, if six marks are one euro still. <laughs> <laughs> There's probably been some inflation, but that's a that's an approximate number. Uh, then a sort of uh, a member membership a member referendum would cost well. I really don't have a good estimate, but it, it would be in the tens of thousands if you would have it as a ballot election. If you have it electronically, it would probably cost a lot less. And, well, just to put things in context, the whole budget of the student union was 3.6 million euros. So, you would, you, you would probably, if you would, well, it depends on how you organize it, you would probably be, you would afford to have a direct democracy, uh, uh, especially if you would, for example, raise the student membership fee or or then cut some some current, cut a bit from the current action. And there's a few things to think about. These are sort of cynical statements coming from an old, old <laughs> active. Uh, these sort of direct methods are it would take. I, I would uh, assume that it would take a long time for students to really get to know them and use them properly. And also they are, it's easy to take advantage, or I don't think it's easy, but it's, I would imagine that for the first few general assemblies, they would be, uh, the current political groups in the, in the council would probably, uh, well, encourage as most, of, as most possible their actives to participate and then they would act as these sort of uh, well, these sorts of student council like Yatkes or, or this sort of uh, it, would, it would act as this sort of uh, continuation, continuation of, of yeah, the council on council politics before the like real members would find these sort of these sort of uh, methods then uh, it would require the whole student union, especially it's sort of it's it's the the people who work there and the sort of and the, the board would need to be the method that it, it it operates would need to be thought out in a whole different way, and it would probably take up resources for years if it if it would if we would like it to succeed in some sort of uh, some sort of fruitful manner. And also, if you only have these sort of general assemblies that would, at best, probably meet once in two months or once in a month, it's, uh, uh, I would imagine that it would be difficult at first to, to, uh, uh, to prevent a lot of power from uh, sort of centralizing into, for example, the people who work at the student union, who spend every day in the student union office, if there's only one sort of, uh, if, if there's some sort of uh, oversight only once in a few months, it would probably give give room for all sorts of, well, all sorts of abuses of power. And especially with the general secretary, I would I would imagine without some sort of strong representative uh, body to oversight his or her work, there would be a lot of room for for all sorts of interesting things. And of course the sort of final point is if if everyone in this room would commit to sort of fighting towards this goal, it would probably take quite a lot of energy and quite a lot of time. And well this is sort of an open question, is it worth it? Is it worth to have one student union that would operate in on direct democracy? Is that sort of the thing that we want to focus our resources in? But it's possible, I would say.